Here is my technical analysis on the Bontec heat brake upgrade for the Prusa Mini. I finally found the time to fit my uh, heat brake from Bontec into the Prusa Mini original machine. The reason why I got it is because I wanted to upgrade the clone machine which I made and uh, here link in the card on the quest to get to the Prusa Mini clone and so I wanted to upgrade that which comes with a very basic uh, hot end and it's not a uh, all metal uh, heat brake so I wanted to give it uh, a whole metal heat brake. So I decided to take the, the heat brake from this machine, move it to the clone and then uh, fit the Bontec upgrade into the original Prusa Mini machine. I wanted to break it down for you, so uh, I took the chance of using a very basic infrared camera that attaches to the phone to get a bit of footage and to see what is the advantages in practice of the heat break. And then I also made some comparison to the technical drawings and uh, a bit of uh, technical deep dive, deep dive into it. So let's get into the thermal imaging and uh, let's have a look at how these uh, three heat breaks behave. Removing the hot end is pretty simple. You just have to, have to release the three grub screws and then I also uh, remove the cable clip on the top and also the pinda sensor. You have to take it away to re release the cables. I didn't remove the cables as instructed by uh, Bontec. This is a personal preference. I didn't want to break anything by uh, loosening it and also I needed the cables in place to do the filming. But you, as you can see, you can take away the hot end without touching the cables. I think this also makes the whole thing a bit easier than having to remove everything. So this is the first take, so I, uh, I heat it up everything to 200 degrees, so now you see the temperature starts to climb, and the spot you see here is just above the heat break, and it climbs up to 45 degrees now and counting, so you see here we're above 150, the set point is actually 200, and it settles at around 65 degrees in approximately 3 minutes, and it stops there without going much further, so uh, I thought that 3 minutes was uh, pretty much the right time. Please remember that this is done without the fan, so you don't have the fan that is blowing on the hot end, so the final temperature in the real machine will be lower. You see here a bit of a close-up take and it's again around 65 degrees. This is the hot end of the clone machine. As you will see later on, it's a pretty simple design. And uh, here is the same, uh, exact same experiment. So I have uh, set a set point to 200 degrees. And you see here that uh, basically having no heat separation, the, uh, let's say the, heat pipe, I cannot even call it an heat break, is increasing temperature. In this case I don't have any PTFE tube inside because the PTFE is one single part together with the Bowden, but it gets up to 135-36 degrees which is uh, very much higher than the Prusa original. How to remove it? It's pretty simple, you have to heat it up and then you can use a 7 uh, socket wrench on the front to, to uh, grab uh, the nozzle and then uh, a pair of pliers just of course you have to be very ultra careful because this all these things are going to be hot as you see here uh, that's uh, taken away and uh, this is where i use my trusty uh, copper brush uh, i have one handy i use it to clean the nozzles every now and then and here is the bontec um, heat brake kit uh, very simple packaging you just have the PTFE tube and the heat brake itself. So let's get that out of the package. You see this is uh, what you get. And you see that there's this throat that is what actually makes the uh, separation. You see here in the PTFE tube, if my focus in the camera complies, there is a chamfer on the top and it's flat on the other side. So you have to be very careful because the chamfer goes towards the nozzle part. And this is the same experiment I did before, so the hot end is outside the machine, the set point is 200 degrees, and you will see that in this case the temperature goes around 45 degrees and then stabilizes. Again, it's roughly 3 minutes, so after 3 minutes it gets quite steady between 45 and 46 degrees, so that is when I stopped the filming. 
I think that is, you know, it's like 15 degrees less than the Prusa original, so that is definitely an upgrade. And you see here, a close-up, that's the average temperature of the square, and you see that there is quite a visible change of color between where the heat end screws to the block and uh, the tail of the of the heat uh, of the heat break. So that's a pretty uh, simple and visual cue that this actually does what this promised. So this is the comparison of the three uh, heat breaks side by side. On the top left corner you see the Bontech heat break, in the middle is the Prusa original and in the right uh, corner is the clone uh, heat break. Now I brought them all into the CAD system uh, to, take that, to take a look at how they look inside, which is what makes a difference. So uh, again you see on the left uh, side you have the heat break from Bontec and on the right side you have the heat break from the Prusa Mini clone. Let's start with a simpler design, the one on the right, uh, that is a basic uh, hot end, that is actually, it's not actually a heat break, it's actually a pipe and you don't see it in there but inside that heat break runs the PTFE tube all the way down sitting on the nozzle. So this is a non-metal non uh, heat break, so it is subject to the limitation of the temperature resistance of the PTFE. You need to be careful about that because PTFE degrades at around 230-240 degrees. It can also release toxic fumes, so you need to be extra careful with that. Also remember the thermistors and the heat cartridges, they are not you know, exact science, so make sure you're running that at a significant lower, uh, so keep, keep a margin of temperature to make sure that that remains safe for you. Then in the middle we have the Prusa one, so the first thing you have to notice is that the, the hole, the bore inside is actually tipped. Uh, they are uh, drilling it with a regular drill bit which has a 120, 118 degrees. So that requires a special plastic insert to fit in there. So you can't just take any PTFE tube, you have to take the one that Prusa provides because that has the chamfer on the top and that sits nicely on the all the way down into this, uh, uh, let's say, angled uh, hole. And then you see it's a metal heat break because then you have the filament going through the metal straight into the nozzle, uh, leaving the PTFE tube. The rating of this machine is 245 degrees. So again, you know, thinking that the thermistor can have some, uh, some um, bias there, but that is the range of materials you can use. So now we take a look at the heat break from uh, Bontec and the first thing you can notice is they use the same design for the inner bore so you again need to have this uh, special insert and the other thing is that the all metal part is longer and it contains what is called as a, what is regular, normally called the throat. The throat is where you have removed metal and you leave just a thin piece of metal that connects the threaded part with the back part of the hot end. The reason why we do that is that hair is an insulator while metal is a conduct conductor, so uh, hair does a much better job in keeping the heat separated from the heat block to the back of the hot end uh, than just having it uh, plain metal like in the Prusa one. And you saw that in the IR uh, camera readings that you have like uh, one third less of the temperature. And now we have all the information we need to just jump into our nice set of conclusions. So I will wrap it up saying that I never had issues with the uh, eat creep in my Prusa Mini machine. So my overall recommendation being an engineer is if it works, don't touch it. In this case, I decided to break the rule because I wanted to make an upgrade in the clone machine. Uh, and I didn't want to put the clone machine with, uh, let's say, at a higher level than, uh, than my original one. So uh, that's why I decided to upgrade the original one instead. Having said that, I consider this, for my experience and my machine, this a non-necessary upgrade. But as you've seen in the pictures, it's quite clear that there is an advantage using the uh, hot end or the heat break from uh, the Bontech uh, upgrade that drops down the temperature 
uh, like one third or something like that. Of course, this you have to think that this is made outside the machine, so the fan is not blowing on it. So it is, let's say, a competitive test, so you don't have to take that uh, to the letter. But still, uh, it is quite clear that the, the heat break does its uh, job of reducing the hot end temperature altogether. So the heat break kit as such is quite good. It does what it promises. There is a couple of things that I would have, uh, let's say, preferred to have from, from Bontech. And, uh, you know, I would suggest them to uh, think about packaging it with uh, the kit itself because it comes with just a heat break and a, a small bit of PTFE tube. And because of the design they've chosen, you cannot just slam in any kind of PTFE tube. You have to have this chamfer to take care of the uh, drill bit uh, angle that they use to drill the bore of the main uh, uh, hot end part. So one spare PTFE tube would be great in case, you know, you mess up with that or if you have to change it because after a while uh, it will, that's, that's a worn out part. The second thing that I missed uh, from, from this upgrade is the conductive pot paste. I had some conductive paste laying around, but that was, uh, let's say, pure chance. And I think it's, it's a very small addition uh, to the kit, but it makes a big difference because, uh, you know, not everybody has conductive paste around. And also in the instructions, it's quite clear that you have to have it and, and install it uh, with the upgrade. And that concludes the uh, video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then you might consider subscribing to the channel. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you for watching and until next time.